Welcome to the Roth Show. When I was in my 20s, I had to go through the obligatory, and it is obligatory, singer in a hard rock band biker slash I am immortal phase. Are you familiar with that, Tom? You've worked with a lot of rock bands, a lot of singers coming out of the Henson studio and a variety of other places. Have you experienced singers who are going through this phase? I have, actually, yes. Guys and that are getting motorcycles, that are riding motorcycles that never did before. And they never did before, but what kind of motorbikes are they usually choosing? Uh, not... I haven't come across a lot of guys getting Harleys these days. They're usually smaller bikes, Hondas, but, you know, nice bikes. And what is the, well, nice bikes is, is subjective. What is the lifestyle? What is the determination? What's the theater of it? For example, me, I was road warrior Tarzan with a bar mitzvah, Lee Roth. That's kind of generally how I was known in the ladies' room at the Troubadour. When I was in my 20s, okay, remember how I looked? My haircut had its own area code. It was like James Brown. My haircut had it would have had its own Instagram if I had haircut today. <laughs> no, really, and, and that was as important part of riding the bike as the actual bike at that point in time. I'm not talking about real biking. I'm not talking about real genuine motorcycling. I'm not talking about somebody who knows how to build it or fix it. I'm talking about my approach at lead singers who have virtually no fucking business on anything without training wheels or a handler sitting in a sidecar going, whoa, whoa, whoa. You follow me so far? I do. You're in agreement? I am. Well, then let's continue. I go down. You want to continue? <laughs> I go down to Ventura Boulevard. Roscoe Boulevard. Whoa. Yeah, they're connected. Roscoe Boulevard. And there's an amazing Harley Davidson shop there. It's probably still is. Long, long window runs along, you know, and I'm in my 20s, whatever. And I show up, Road Warrior. I got those pants, the jacket, the scarf, everything. I get the same kind of glasses. That's why I wore them. And I walk in, and the fellow's legit. You know, he's wiping his hands off and everything. Oh, David Lee, how are you? Great, man, put the tools away, man. How can I have the great stuff like this? So well, how can I help you? Oh, I want to buy a bike. It's time to buy a motorcycle. Well, I can see that. He says, so uh, what are you thinking? A Harley Davidson Flat Bob Heritage Series, soft tail, pan head, sort of uh, long fork kind of a... He's very serious about it, and I thought for a second, and I said, without a trace of humor, I said, mm, I'm thinking about something my size in blue. And there was that silence, and he said, okay. And then, you know, when you take one... You didn't need that was just consonant. Okay. <laughs> and you know, it's when like when the lights come on of what he's dealing with or whatever, what my values and priorities are. And we went around and tried them on. Because I didn't know anything about engines. I didn't know anything about it. For me, it was the obligatory rock and roll guy singing in a hard rock band slash Hell's Angel Rebel Cell. Indeed, when I was living on Horn Street right up above Tower Records, which is off of Sunset, the famous Tower Records, I would literally listen to Billy Idol's songs. <laughs> As I got right, I can do Bill. You want me to do Billy? You want me to do it with the accent? Will the rebel, yeah! Right? And I would do that shit. You know, have the floor 14 would be a that white wedding. <laughs> and those two notes launched an entire career. And for me, it would launch quite a fucking weekend usually. White wedding. <sighs> and I go downstairs and I get on my bike. And I had a Harley Davidson, which I had tried on in the window at the Harley Davidson store on Roscoe Boulevard. I don't know what the guy was. This guy. <laughs> well, in Orange County Choppers, this is back when I'm in my 20s, you know, he's like this. And I try one on and I come in and I look in the mirror and I go, got anything lower? <laughs> Serious. Come on. Think of who I was. Have fun with that now. And uh, we brought out something in blue. You'll, you can see it on video. Get on the YouTube. And uh, got one there. It's like, sits low. I go, Okay. I'll take it. And I paid for him right there. Drove it right off of the yacht, right off of the lot. It was my land yacht, okay? 
great big thing. You got your feet all the way forward on the pegs. You know that routine. It's like you're almost reclined. I'll be lounging on the Riviera. The Riviera Lounge, that is. You know, that's a famous sound, that. That's a famous sound. It's as famous as the uh, Zippo lighter. When you do that, the sound of a shotgun racking. Everybody knows what that is. A screen door in a trailer with a girl named Peppa smoking a non-filter cigarette going, where the hell is Dave? All right, I know that sound. And it's as familiar as, which is the sound Peppa makes me ma- Stay focused, will you? Because it's all, it's all Harley Davidson humor here, man. You would get that. You're wearing a bike jacket right now. You're wearing a motorcycle jacket right now, okay? It's in everything we do. It's like James Brown is in every kind of music possible now. And Harley Davidson is in everything we do, okay? Cut to Sunset Boulevard. The sun is setting. It's exactly the right time, okay? You've seen the video of me. I've got the steer horns like from a bull, you know? It's a, the bull sounds a lot like the bike. And I was fortified by Schlitz malt liquor. The bull, the bull, bull. The rebel cell. Oh, yeah. I'm headed for a white wedding. Yeah. And then you, that's the feel, man. It's Billy Idol is the perfect music for that. And I would listen to that up on floor 14, you know, up above on Horn Street. A lot, a lot of musicians know exactly the apartment building I'm talking about. I'd come steaming down that hill and you go as slow as you can. Otherwise, they can't tell who's driving. This was before helmets, okay? So it was as important what you're wearing and so forth, you know? And you see it in the video. I think in Panama or something, the Van Halen tune, there's, that's daylight of me. And you go as slow as you can because the traffic, tourist traffic, starts to queue up. And going through, I think it's Crescent Heights uh, and Sunset Boulevard where Green Blatt's Deli is. There's a huge glut. There was a club right there. And there's the Marmont Hotel. And it's a nice, slow-going thing. And I remember I've got, I got two great stories about front pegs. These are front peg stories. There's regular pegs which you use when you're just kind of like on a bicycle kind of thing. You can walk the bike, okay? That's important. I'm going to show you why they're important later. You don't ever use them when you ride. You use the front pegs so that, you know, you got your legs all the way back like this and you just cruise and be making the scene with a gangster lean. It is related. And you're on these back like this and you're cruising like so and you got both your feet up and you are in such a position of ease that you're even working on your tan. This is the impression. You wear sunglasses with side pieces like this, not because of the deadly UVA rays, but because you're so cool, you don't even have to see as much as normal mortal people. Normal mortal people need to have a view of, say, 18 feet ahead. Glasses like, excuse me, glasses like this, you can't even see the mic. <laughs> and everybody instinctually knows this, particularly when you're indoors after sundown. And you're sitting like this on the bike. This actually happened. Got to the corner right in front of Greenblatt's on Sunset Boulevard, and I was perfect. And I was just going so slow. You go so achingly slow that people are afraid you're going to fall over, right? And you can, choom, 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 choom. I'm looking in the mirror. I'm, I'm looking in the monitor. I'm going to get the cheekbones. I can't talk and keep cheekbones. But you go, like, choom, 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 choom. And there's a carload of, I swear to God, three hot Korean chicks and a dude driving. You could tell they're fucking tourists. They're probably going to the rainbow. I might even land one of them. I'm in that right age and bracket when that shit could happen. It happened regularly. And the fucking bike fell over. And I watched them drive off laughing. You can laugh now. <laughs> I'm not kidding. That shit happened. Fucking asshole. <laughs>